way back we've been friends since way back made in since way back how it's been since way back since back then can't change that we've been another day another trailer this one for the joker not bad not bad i will say it's a bit uh not light but light, light on action and i get uh, that I, for a first one i and that wasn't really expecting i rather good just story really uh, honestly with this I one i do but a good story with the joker requires action mm. he is a man of action and no one can deny that that's 90 percent of what he does is Act. Well, we'll probably see most of that. I mean, oh, there's I'm sure we will. I'm sure where there's he's holding stuff. hostage on the subway. Then there, oh, yeah. there's that riot which they right didn't, there, which they didn't include on this purposefully. Yeah. So I think they, I think they did it intentionally, because I'm not looking for like a battle. I'm looking for like, all right, he's holding someone's head under the water mm -hmm. and laughing, or you know. But I feel like they used this as a very nice light teaser, and they did that intentionally. They didn't put any of that in there, so that they could kind of be like. Here's a look at just him, mm -hmm. not what he's doing, not what he's, because I think the big issue was people seeing Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker. A lot of people just didn't see it. I did. I I enjoy him. I think he looks good. I feel like they took a lot of uh, cues from Heath Ledger's Joker look and imparted it on his Joker. Uh, specifically the way they do the slick back hair with the longer tangles mm -hmm. is very reminiscent of that. And then they chose to go the opposite direction with the makeup and it's much more, uh, Cesar clownish. Rom yeah. Well more, yeah, but more. I'd say Cesar Romero clownish as opposed to any of yeah. the other ones, which they did a pay homage to him as well in, uh, the, uh, mine's... the Heath Ledger <laughs> Jokers. <laughs> Every one. time I look at it, it reminds me more of, uh, What's that? Uh, Stacy, uh, that clown, getting Stacy. I can't remember his oh, first um, name. Uh, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. There's like, cause the one Cesar Romero goes off of his Pagliaccio or whatever. Poop, what the fuck his name is? He's the famous clown, the, mm -hmm. the original clown of clowns, and that's where the the clownish one comes from. Usually, like the big circles and the wide, the nose and the painted on smile mm -hmm. those are where those originated from but they've taken a lot of cues from other stuff over the years to like bring his whole look together to what it is mm -hmm. now granted obviously all the jokers have different looks but he's kind of gotten this at least in general in the comics he's kind of got a somewhat base at least before they added two more jokers he had a somewhat base look like he would change mm -hmm. make up here and there but it was the white green and usually a fancy suit mm -hmm. and they've did they've like moved on from that obviously now you have the gangster joker and the psycho joker and even the regular joker isn't always purple suited up anymore yeah, you know there's the jeretic joker now yeah who just showed up in the old uh old lady uh harley quinn oh uh, yeah that one's all the future world tale though so if mm -hmm. you count all those jokers we got neo joker we've got the howlers and uh batman beyond we've got the joker i think that's where batman that's from beyond. that joker that um from that batman beyond that's, joker i think the one they have in there is an even older joker that's supposed to be his son the well, other one that no. kind of mangles his face up no he that doesn't want to look like harley quinn which one are you talking about in the Harley Quinn? Oh, the old one? lady Batman. Harley Quinn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that he, he mangles his face but, up because he's like, I thought it was kind of a. It's interesting. Sorry, like just it. like I don't want to look like her, so he just like literally mangles the, yeah. the crap out of his face, and then he's all kind of like, Ugh, he looks all messed up now. Like, yeah, hmm. To to do, I guess, what you don't want to look like somebody, you want to look more like your your father. I guess he looks more like his father. Yeah. That's what he would say. He's like, I want to look like more like my dad. <laughs> like, you want to do that? All you have to do is fucking throw in some fucking smiles, buddy. Because if Quinn don't do smiles, she does the. Uh... I only I only heard because I issue got all hot for. Oh, it's that a good. Week. It's an all. It's a. Uh, I say good. It's an all right series for a cop idea. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Old they man took, Logan. Mm -hmm. But the oh, thing is, now, it now, just, old now man, they're just doing everything now. Old, old, old man, man Hawkeye, Hawkeye. Old man, man Quill. Yeah, I was gonna say now they've made it a thing but originally it was then then they did old man hawkeye and then dc copped for old man uh or old lady really hurt harley oh, yep 
which I mean, I can't blame them and it wouldn't be the first time either company copied, obviously, you know, they do that shit all the time. It's uh, the nature of business. But so are you excited then not for Joker? Not yeah, Cobra? no, yeah. Super excited. I like the take they're going. I'd like the mood of the movie because in every other joke time you see the Joker, it's about Batman. It's always about That's Batman. why I was excited for this just to be really well, and more I think centric around that's, him. Yeah, the, and the other people are all pissy too for the same reason people are pissy in Venom. It's like, well, how oh, can yeah, you do a, a Venom in me without Spider-Man? Like this. And then they made however million dollars and we'll make another one because you can they're, they're they have stories besides their villains now do those two or sorry they have stories besides their heroes but do those two villains focus on their hero yes they're, they're obsessed mm -hmm. right but they do other shit mm -hmm. the joker does other shit you know venom does other shit they they eventually become characters of their own in their own right to a very high degree you know mm -hmm. what i mean they're very recognizable very especially for what their original startings were you know venom was a fan bought concept and uh joker was supposed oh, venom to venom was just a suit effort just well yeah but that's, suit. that's that's exactly what i mean though just he starts from as a suit. concept from a fan not even a character concept just yeah. a design concept and then evolved into his own character over time and story the joker was supposed to die and stay dead in his first appearance on Batman. And he evolved, you know what I mean? The mm -hmm. character evolved beyond its creator's original designs. So I think that taking it like this, giving him that standalone will... It, I mean, the Joker's already arguably the, one of the biggest villains in comics, mm -hmm. if not the biggest. But I think having his own movie like that, along with what he already has, will cement that spot as the villain you know cinematically like i just don't know any other villains villains with their own movie you've got venom but he's not a villain no villain. he wasn't that was an anti-hero movie exactly you don't get villain movies i'm trying to think but i don't know any off the top of my head that's why it's going to be an interesting run it's going to be good good and fun to see you know what i mean how they because i think it's funny to say that, but I think it'll go a lot like a Game of Thrones season, wherein that usually when you write a movie, a story, a saga, you write it with uh, reader satisfaction, right? Mm -hmm. Everything needs to lead into something and have like convalescence. And usually by the end of the story, everything is either fixed or dealt with. The But they're, the Game of Thrones books aren't written that way. Intentionally, they're written to throw you off, to mess with your sense of the story and where you think things are going. And and in the specificity that the heroes don't win by the end of the story. Mm -hmm. That's not how it's written. That's not how it works. But in the movies, for for with very few changes, depending on the genre usually, the hero wins. That's just standard. That is not even a preconceived notion in this movie because there's no hero. Mm -hmm. I mean, there might be a hero, but he's not the hero of the story. No, I, I we'll see what this is going to, you know, he may, what I think this is going to be, is going to be a hero in his eyes of the story. Oh, you no. Know? It's more of like, he sees it like, you know, I, I feel like I need to do this in order to better the city because that's just kind of seems like it's going you know for him being picked on being bullied on right. from everyone i think and that I was think he's like just... the pushing point yeah though, to make him crack i'm not sure where they're gonna send him with it after because we they haven't really given any hints no, i'm just curious i'm just curious i think that's yeah. kind of where maybe they might go just they could definitely more... i think that would be an interesting one and it would he's be... saving the city you know in his eyes right i but, think if well... they did it the right way it would be a really good run like when you're like it but and then having... when we're watching it, though, we're like, yeah, bro, you're not, you're, well, you're no, not, I, right. you're but doing think... all the wrong things to do. <laughs> right, right. And I, I think if they did it that way, it would be nice, but they'd have to include something like an inner monologue. Yeah. Because otherwise you can't fully like, like, especially in dialogue, it's really hard to nail a character's intentions without sounding on the head. What are you going to do? I'm going to go save the world because I like this girl. That, this is, you can't write that line. He's got to say it's for my family. Mm -hmm. And then in his head, I must save oh, so-and-so. And obviously for the Joker, it'd be different. It'd be, you know, it's like, ah, we'll save the money. Burn it all. 
It's safe now. I don't know. I think they would have to add something to it like that in order to like convey his uh his, his intent otherwise anything he does is just going to come off crazy and at least any decently written joker actions would come off crazy and like wild and unknowable for why he mm. did half of his shit and I think that's another <clears> thing I think they're going to run through in this and something I was just talking to my younger brother about earlier where they talk about it and it's like trying to explain like the Joker is evil, but he's not malicious. He doesn't do what he does to hurt people. He does what he does because he likes doing it, mm -hmm. which is a hard concept for people to get. It's like, well, it's like, but no, but it's not about you suffering. It's about him and his game. He doesn't hate you. He doesn't feel any ill will. He doesn't even feel good when something bad happens to someone he doesn't like. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or that that's not what it's about for him. It's about his personal game. Him enjoying the play and the fun and the run. And you suffering is just part of that. You know what I mean? That's just part of his game with Batman. It's not personal it's not malicious it's not done with like i guess it's kind of done with cruelty but only in the definition of not with malice you know what i mean he doesn't bear any ill will he doesn't hate them he doesn't care if they die or live he's just doing it to do it mm -hmm. which is a very like hard concept to throw in a movie a lot of the time you know the anarchists they did a really good job in the heath ledger one but it took a ton of dialogue for him to like get that point across that wasn't about money. It wasn't about that. It was just about fucking with Batman. And that was like a two and a half hour movie to nail it all the way through. Like they did a good job all the way through. I think it was three. It probably was. Yeah. Now that you mention it, but, and it, and to be fair, the Joker probably has at least as much screen time as Batman in that movie. Batman, not Bruce Wayne, obviously. Yeah. Back and forth. But, much in which it works for that one it works for an, an anti-villain nemesis combo whereas it didn't work so well in batman versus superman although to be fair that movie was split four ways between batman superman clark kent and bruce wayne mm -hmm. which is another reason why i think that movie didn't do so well not so well at all <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, man. It's like that's one of my big. Oh, and then don't forget Wonder Woman. I forgot. Then you have a Wonder Woman side story all in the middle of that. Oh uh, yeah, there was kind of that little, little just a stuff. tiny little. But, I mean, they kind of had to though, so they can kind of like right, connect just, all the oh, pieces. But it's such a. Sh it's so badly done. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's I, just so he, poorly written, executed, and performed on that movie level. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It it felt rushed. It felt like they were trying to catch up to marvel and get to justice league which uh they got to justice league didn't seem to do them that much mm -hmm. good uh i think they finally took their cues with aquaman doing well and shazam hopefully supposedly yeah there's already the reviews already came in that are pretty good for it and it's unfortunate uh, that i just don't respect any critics opinions anymore because they're usually off or not well that on. just no but i mean this makes it a little bit more provable that you know the critics aren't on Marvel's ass. You know they're not like, oh, just because it's Marvel, we're gonna we're gonna make it gold. Yeah, uh, I mean this. The, I mean this obviously shows that they don't care. The it's thing just, is, they always they're like, oh, the more they're paying the Marvel reviewers and Disney buys the Rotten Tomato reviews. It's like, all right, so when your movie gets a good review, it's because you did well. But when their gets, movie gets a good review, it's because they paid for it. Mm -hmm. If I use that logic, then you just well, don't have that much money to pay yeah, for good movies. That's not saying yes. That's why you know this Shazam movie. They can't really use that now. That, right, but that, it, that with excuse, either Aquaman you know? or Wonder Woman, I mean, especially Wonder Woman, critics' reviews were insanely good on Wonder. I Woman. think just Shazam's is going to do more better because it's going to bring in more of that kid Kids, friendly. Yeah. I will say they just they didn't make it. You made a movie about a. What is essentially like, I love superheroes, but that is, and it, while well, made by adults, that is a product for children originally. Mm -hmm. That is, it really is designed. You, and D, every goddamn DC movie is not at all a kid's movie. Not a single goddamn one of them to date is anywhere near what I would call like 
kid themed appropriate mm-hmm. run. Whereas in Marvel, you've got Ant Man and Captain America, somewhat kid appropriate, especially depending on which one you run. The original Iron Man's raunchy, but mm-hmm. it's not dark. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not like. Most of the DC films, which are dark and rah, 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 even the Wonder Woman film, while it was brighter, and the Aquaman film while it was brighter, it's just not a not a kids film. You know what I mean? It's, and it, it's fine. I don't, they weren't meant to be, but that's a dumb decision to not open the market for your movie and make it kid friendly. Mm-hmm. Like that's just a stupid decision. Every movie does that unless it's R rated. Even shit like goddamn. What the hell was it? The Twilight series. Even those, there were scenes and things built in to attract a child audience. Just not a lot of the DC movies. And yeah. To, and to be... But even... Most of the Marvel movies have some of it. You know what I mean? It might not be the whole movie, but a lot of it will be friendly or likable and enjoyable to children. Yeah. Even ones like Guardians of the Galaxy, which what I would consider... Maybe not necessarily darker, but more adult. You know what I mean? They're just not as uh, lighthearted. And, well, no, they are as lighthearted and fun, but it deals with, you know, this planet destruction and this. Mm-hmm. And, and while a lot of the other ones, don't get me wrong, they deal with dark stuff. Iron Man, you know, they're killing people, etc. Same with every Marvel. And that's the other thing. It's like, Marvel's such a joke. They kill more people in Marvel movies than I've ever seen die in DC movies. Not counting the snap. They yeah. were killing mad people, and they weren't always the nicest deaths. I mean, heroes of villains, like the Guardian of the Galaxies uh, 2, when they eject all of the pirates into space. Oh, yeah. I remember that one, yeah. Like, that's a dark-ass part. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It really is. That's pretty morbid when you stop and you're just like, think about it and dwell on it. But then you have the original scene with Baby Groot. And who the f- wouldn't love that? You know what I mean? What kid wouldn't love that scene? Mm-hmm. I couldn't think of one off the top of my head. I'm sure they exist, but it's just good, wholesome family entertainment. Yeah. And you know what? I you know the funny part is I think they're gonna put a lot of that in the Joker. Not necessarily super kid winning, but there will be parts where it's just at being from the Joker will be lighthearted and levitable. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Granted, they might not actually be that way but that will be the joker's take on it you know what i mean whether or not the bodies are falling that the music will be light the scene will be at least on some of them and i especially after seeing that trailer and with the music that they used which i can't remember the name of that song off the top of my head something summer or some shit but you know they're they're going to incorporate a lot of aspects in this i feel like this is not going to be like a one-dimensional film coming out of that I think they're going to put a lot into it because it's not an easy thing to do. And then I think you have some really good professionals working on it too, like Joaquin Phoenix and the actually who the hell is directing. Um, I actually didn't really pay attention to that one. That's a good thing to learn because that will give us a little bit more info on, uh, it is Todd Phillips. Road Trip, Old School, Starsky and Hutch, The Hangover Trilogy, Due Date, and War Dogs. As well as Borat. Hmm. Well, at least they got someone who's kind of funny. I like most see. of The Hangovers. Yeah. They weren't bad. The first one was pretty good. Yeah, that's probably the only one I like. The I like the third one. one, too. Wait, is it the second or the third one where they go to, like, uh, the other country? Yeah, and get the third one, I think. I like that one, one pretty they good. Did. Yeah, that one was probably better than the second one. Second one, I... the first one was really good. Second one, I don't even remember. I'll totally be honest with you. I don't, I don't remember what the about. fuck they were even doing. I feel like it was some stupid shit. Who cares? The third one was decent yeah. because it had uh, what's his name, uh, Kim, Doctor Kim. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was kind of more involved in that one. Yeah, in the third one, and the monkey. Monkey was a good part of that. They just, I think they did better on those two than those. Uh, and then, uh, not Borat, but uh, there was another one on that list that was pretty good. That's the other reason I think I'm, even though I was never like necessarily super excited for it, I was okay with Zachary Levi playing Shazam. I was a little skeptical about them getting him to look the part, and I still think he's a little small. 
I don't know. He's like, the way they make him, he looks all. <laughs> yeah, and even then, he's still kind of yeah. a little small. They, I think they, I think they got him though because he probably played he, the more kid part. No, he, it's that's exactly, and I can guarantee you just from what I know personally about Zachary Levi, I, I he's a big. Nerd. I couldn't imagine like a John Cena or <laughs> I wasn't. Or and like, I wouldn't necessarily even want one like that or like The Rock or yeah. But, I, uh, I could, no, if it was The Rock, I'm like no, 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 no. You need to stop. You need to stop with you all the movies. You couldn't do anything doing. like that. <laughs> you could do obviously not Henry Cavill himself, but. A, Henry Cavill's substitute would be and just he, the same. I don't think he could do the party. That no. kid part. Because all the parts I've seen, ever seen him play, he's always very serious. Serious and low. And... I'm sure he can do light parts. It just looks the part for a deep, serious yeah. guy. <laughs> but uh, the reason being is I've known about Zachary Levi ahead when from Chuck and other stuff. And then I've also seen him doing stuff in some of the communities. Like video, the video game communities and other things. So I know he's a huge nerd. Like a huge, huge fucking nerd. Uh, and I think it's really important, ne- not necessarily to be a huge nerd, but to be willing to look into the source material. Mm-hmm. Because that's where you're going to get your character. The directors, they might know what they want your character to do, but they don't know what the fans want your character to do. They, unless they're a fan themselves, they just don't have a fucking clue. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to get the right character persona, you're going to have to pull it from the character. So, like, even... Uh, oh, what's it? They always have the, the one meme, the DC training to... Or superheroes training and then Marvel superheroes training. Is, oh, yeah, I've seen that one, yeah. And it's cool because it's like, okay, yeah, they're lifting weights. And then on Marvel side, everyone's reading a comic. Just reading a comic. <laughs> reading a comic. Reading a comic. <laughs> But realistically, how else would you research to be yeah. Cap? How else would you research to be these characters mm-hmm. than to go into the comics? Yeah, it, it's interesting. I'll give it that. And I think, like I said, I, I didn't know what else to expect from it because I didn't know what villain they were using until recently. I didn't know a ton of stuff. Yeah, who was the... Uh, I can't remember. It's like Baron something. Yeah, I've already picked up some issues. Um on some first appearances of the uh, Shazam family. Mm-hmm. They show uh, show their appearance at the end of the credits, supposedly. Oh, that'll be interesting. That's a little shitty that someone revealed that, though. That, it's because I follow speculators, so I kind of... It's it's ahead of the game, so I yeah. know I I knew two weeks ahead of time, and now everyone just barely barely started today, and yesterday started catching on. So that was that was the price to pay for that one. I picked up like three or four, I think, and so that's cool. But it's cool. I actually did look at them, and yeah, they're like all different kinds of Shazams. Like yeah, they they're not have, all the same. They got yeah, color, they got different little... colors and everything. Nope. I was like, oh, cool. And then they're supposed to not have like super different powers, but don't they have like specific specificity um, on some stuff? I didn't go too deep on it. I but think that... they had like some some ex- either extra somewhat different powers on some times. That might have been a later thing to help distinguish them. I don't know. I do remember that the kids were his, usually his adopted family from the... Uh... Yeah, there was another issue that they told us to get, which was, I think, in it was in Flashpoint, even. It oh, happened yeah. in. Um, that's some of the first appearances of the those Shazam, characters. Yeah. of those. Uh, yeah. Well, because the Shazam family, with a couple exceptions, are fairly recent. I know yeah. there's some of them. No, that ones. was fairly recent. That one I picked up was Justice League 21, New 52. So, nice. yeah, fairly recent. Which is rough, because that, that's one of the only New 52 series that were any fucking good with Shazam. You know, I uh, I read the start a little bit, and I guess, honestly, I guess that was one of the best Shazam uh, fights that they've ever done before. That's what I've heard to from a fair, lot Shazam of people. To be fair, Shazam has really shitty fights. Yeah. Because he's just too damn powerful. Even it, more so than Superman in some ways with the the seven power set or whatever. Like he I think just... he's fighting Black Adam in this one. Which is because he's even in the a, cover, he's even getting choked yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> Which, to be fair, Black Adam is like his only decent opponent. Even Superman, when you come down to brass tacks, should get his ass kicked by Shazam. That's magic. what everyone says that Shazam. Uh, yeah. It's magic. That's oh, why. even, um, oh, yeah, that's, yeah. And then the, uh, what's his name? Uh, Levitt even says, like, I want to be in just like that. He's like, put me in there. <laughs> like I said, it's one of those things where people never like, like to do the thing but realistically when you think about the two characters and their upper limits and their actual skills i mean come on shazam has the strength of hercules the fucking speed of fucking hermes the goddamn wisdom of athena or whatever 
I don't know. His ass. I always forget all of them. <laughs> there, there's a ton. I, I could remember if I could remember because uh, it goes with the acronym. Yeah. Uh, God. Strength of Hercules. Ares. Power of Zeus. Uh, God, what's the end? I won't be able to remember off the top. Like, I used to know all seven of them off the top of my head and I could spit them out at you, but. Shazam I kind of like that they, not... they did the Shazam part, though, instead of going with the Captain Marvel name. Honestly, yeah. you know, I, I think, think it's a better, it goes, I think it's goes a better, better name with, with him. Yeah. yeah, and it goes, yeah. Cause, and then, yeah, like, like you said, Shazam kind of goes more with, like, when he calls out his name. It really does. Like, they didn't go to, I uh, think, with Captain Marvel. I don't know. That's it. That, 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 sound, that sounds good. too fi- 1950s to Very me. Very 1950s. <laughs> Captain did Marvel! <laughs> I'm gonna save the day! And then he just transforms. And then you have the 60s, 70s guys. Shazam! <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. I like that. I, whole I think it was really good. Idea. And and like you said, the, the mythos they put behind the name. Yeah, much, really much better. Really tied it together. Much better. They also never really got any tech context for Captain Marvel. Like, there was no reason he was called Captain Marvel. Yeah. There was no. Well, I, I guess because uh, he was owned by, was it Toy? No, it was Wizard Comics. There yeah. we go. He started off with Wizard Comics. And I think he was. No, he came after Superman. Or no, he was, I think, before Superman. I don't. Let's see. I think he came out before Superman. I think he might have come out before, but I don't think he got popular. If not, then he came out that month after Superman did, or the second month after him. Oh, God, now it's pulling up those showtime. I'm going to have to put... Shazam. Oh, yeah, Captain Marvel. DC. It's the only way I'll find it. Yeah, see, Wiz Comics there. This is the first appearance right there. 39. And yeah, Superman came out on 39 of June. June. Uh, it would technically be Action Comics. Yeah, it came out June of 1939. No, I believe. April. Oh, April. Ooh, I, was, I was off by two months at least. And a year. 1938. Oh, it's a 38. Damn. Okay, He's so it was a 39. No one beats him, man. Everyone... I thought it was. Okay, so that's, that's why I was right there. So it was after, yeah. Because they were trying to capitalize on, on the superhero Superman, stuff. Yeah. So There were a ton of But then, I guess DC came at them and said, hey, we, we kind of don't like that you have the same exact superhero yeah. that Which we is have. Because of the original... And they have more so money, she... so they shut them down. Yeah. Well, they bought them out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they just bought them out. Huh? Yep, bought them out. And once they owned it, they are like... They just didn't use the character. No, they didn't. And, and then, then for when so the 1960s long, the, yeah, game, Marvel expansion. came out with theirs. It was already too late before they yep. could uh, they could bring but him back But you know out. the funnier thing about that is that... And the funnier thing being that even though this is the first official appearance of Superman, there are actually Superman comics before this comic where he's uh, black and white text even in the old school where it was actually a strip. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, but, ma- Magic of Joe Schuster and them probably were starting off small. And... Oh yeah, but what I find funny is Shazam. It's the other way around, right? They they made Shazam to kind of capitalize, but Superman's powers are all stolen from Shazam. Not like literally, but Superman couldn't fly originally. He couldn't mm-hmm. shoot any lasers. He, there's a lot of stuff he can do. He was basically just really yeah, strong. Yeah, just there's just he his, couldn't fly. Couldn't just history of history of writing more and more yep. about the character and then just adding uh, more stuff. Yeah, like, that, that was now. a product of the golden age where nice. you could just say and do anything with no explanation. <laughs> when it was truly comic book writing, as they say, and not science fiction. But as if you ever go read those and tell me the go ahead and feel free to tell me the literary value because they're literally pieces of shit <laughs> all of yeah. the old comics prior to about 1960 are written like i re- i've read crap. a few of them i read a few of them i like to read the more of the older um i like horror silver stuff. age so like, horror old like score old, is good like but it's because it's written like a book you know what i mean the dialogue is written like a, mm-hmm. a mary shelley uh, book yeah. almost in the same manner of frankenstein and dracula they just really take cues from that and it works but realistically, any superhero text before about before the Silver Age, when you really read, I still it, don't even like reading Silver Age. I can't even read that. Sometimes. I can do I can do Silver Age, but I cannot do Golden Age. They're all just so ridiculous. They have terrible plot lines, terrible stories, bad writing. It really shows comic books in its infancy. You know what I mean? 
and, and in a state while they may call it golden, I call it unpolished crap. That's still before it hits the hits the water and the grind blade. Like it's hard, but it's not sharp. It's not cutting. It's not getting what you want. Yeah, there's some good golden age books though. Some they're, uh, they're there. Some good uh, some good mystery books. Some good uh, Wild Wild West books I've read before. Right, but are there any good superhero no. books? There, I think because there's a couple. At, there's a couple, but because I think that, that was at their, you know, that's at their prime. It's you know, their, they, they, I mean, that was their birth. Yeah, you know their know birth. I mean? And you know, nobody's like, mm, I guess this is how we write them. Let's not just write them like this. Right. <laughs> and even more so, they're writing for uh, when you have market... Western stories and mystery right, stories which are still of history selling. That you and know, you can write. You know, you have history of like yep, how they write horrors. Them. You have these examples, but superheroes as opposed to regular heroes, yeah. are. They were new. Yeah. They really were. 1920s, 1930s. There was, I guess was there was the really no way for them to write it not cheesy. Well, like then. you said, they just, they didn't know. They yeah. And even more. And it was just for kids. It was not meant exactly. for it. It wasn't meant for it. Exactly. It was not to meant to be critically thin. It was supposed to be a bedtime story, basically, which is fine. And even, like I said, even more so than not having examples before. Like, yeah, they knew where they were writing for children, but they don't have a map of what they want from this. Because like you said, it's new. They, How are you... Like, if I brought you the first steak in the world, could you tell me how you wanted it cooked? <laughs> Rare medium? You wouldn't even know. You know what I mean? Rare, medium, and well done. You would just know what it is at that point. Raw steak. And later they figured out how to cook it good. And, and to be fair, it's not like there aren't crap comic books made today. You yeah. know what I mean? There are plenty yeah. of shitty comic There's, books yeah. made today. Uh, There's some that I read. I'm trying to re remember one off the top of my head that was just absolute crap. Um, I was reading Major X today. Oh. A little bit. <laughs> and I, I liked it because it was just so like... 90s <laughs> anything 90s or even 80s uh late 80s when they did the whole everybody needs guns and shoulder pads and and they and he he went rob liefeld went heavy on that he, he was like oh he was the he, king of that era well sure. even in this book like he he knew that he's like i'm just gonna i am i know that these they make fun of me for this uh, I don't even care. I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna draw this new character with a bunch of pouches here, bunch of pouches here. Now he he did it on purpose, you know, just to make. Really, I think, like I said, it was just a homage to kind of go back to that history of oh, the yeah. 90s. Oh yeah, and, and just like, to, that's his flair, man. Like, and some people even told me, like one comic shop guy who was trying to sell the Major X, he goes, you know, this is. I guess everyone's wanting this book, but to me. I can't really believe that I honestly liked this stuff. <laughs> he's like, he's like, it was, it was actually really bad. Uh, he's like, the writing was not good. The only, the, the, the art's cool, but I, d it's like, it it's has not that necessarily good. It just has that very poppy and there's so much going on for me. Yes. It's so busy. It reminds me of Neo funk art. You know what I mean? Where yeah. they just put as many elements onto the page as possible so that you have so much to look at and so much going on. You know what I mean? How many colors and lights and little fixtures on the wall. And like, I was trying to remember which the, the one of the best examples of that time period's art for me is uh, Wolverine versus Venom. That arc where he was chasing around the interdimensional demon and it ends up oh, I seen, popping. Yeah, I seen that one. It's not necessarily The bad. one I always look at is the Frank so Miller good. limited series one. The one where he has his claws. Right oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like this. That I is a good I like series. that cover. I don't like the cover. People the love is... that book and I do not like that. The thing Frank is, Miller I like cover. I don't like that I like specific the third take. cover. Yes. The one where he's he's kind of on his knees and his, don't see his face. It's just kind of like that blue hair kind of. Popping with a little blue. Yeah, I like that one much better. The thing is, I don't one. like that cover, but I like the pose. And other people have done different renditions of the yeah. pose. Because I love the claws in front of the face pose, but that art from that time period. I just don't like Frank Miller. A lot of people love Frank Miller, and I can't stand his I, art. It just depends for me. Like, like it that depends new, on the that, character. Uh, the one they did for the Detective Comics, which I think was just a reuse of Dark Knight anyways. Yeah, it was. But... I, I, I do not like that one. That, it's the way they make like Batman look. Like He looks like he's... I don't know. He, he looks, looks like jolly. his face is all scrunched up. Yeah, like jolly. <laughs> yeah, like... I don't know. Just not my, I not my style I of usually, art. I like. It depends for me. It depends on the character. So, like, the Daredevil run, I love it for him because everyone's kind of... I heard that one actually pretty good. That's probably when I think I heard a lot of people say when he was in his prime. He is he his did prime. That. But honestly, they look a little squish. They look a little... But it works because he's in this grittier kind of down so he fighting. makes them all look like even yeah dark knight he looks like batman looks like 
Wolverine to me. Like, he looks stubby, kind of. You know, the way he makes him look. And it's not even that. They just, like, they feel compressed. Yeah. Like, even their just feel... feel... Even less top to bottom, but all around yeah. compressed. Like, he's tightened up the character. And, and for Daredevil, it works. All height spandex and... You know what I mean? That really works for him. Characters like Batman with a lot of ornamentation that gets fucked up when you start scaling it. You know, the horns, the cape, the belt. Once you start stretching shit, you're gonna fuck some stuff up. You know what I mean? You gotta keep the aspect ratio. And they, uh, I don't know, who's... Goodness, I need to cheap track more of the artists, but the problem for me is I read for the stories, so it's really... I, I have been keeping a lot of track, like, my favorite guys right now are Art Germ, Stanley Lau Art Germ, I love Joshua Middleton, who's been doing crazy Bat, Batgirl covers. Um, See, I don't even pick up Batgirl. So well, it's because it's, I've been looking at the variants, like, I look at the variants, like... Oh my gosh, they that's, do some that's beautiful. Shit, <laughs> and did uh, you see all the variants for the recent one? Which one? Uh, deceased or one thousand? Oh yeah, they they had so many star exclusives. I think there's like 70, 70 books of they, variants. They and have... I and I missed so many of my chances. The one I really wanted was the uh, Alex Ross one. He did the uh, Detective Comics. I think thirty nine. That's the first appearance of uh, Batman. Oh yeah, yeah. I forget yeah. which exact number it is, but. Um, I could tell by the cover it's that Batman where he's swinging through, the, and then oh, you yeah. see the two the two guys with their top hats right there with their guns, yeah. and uh, that oh my gosh I missed that one I didn't buy it because the shipping was ridiculous I think it was like fifteen something Jeez. I can't remember, and it was oh, already it was like a twenty five dollar book for the whole thing so I was like oh it's already thirty almost forty dollars I'm gonna spend I was like now nah, pass guess how much already these books have been going on eBay now how much like two hundred four hundred dollars damn. I was like, oh my gosh, I should have bought one, damn it. <laughs> and it was such a cool, like, because you know how he draws, you're just like, oh my gosh, it was such a cool fucking cover. Really cool. Out of all the other ones, I probably wanted was that one. Oh, and the other one I loved was this I'll, Art Germ one. I'll show you Art Germ, he's really cool. He's like one of the up and coming two guys. He did this one, he did like a golden age, like cool one where it's like Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy and uh, Catwoman all together. And he does really good, like, women. Like, he knows how to draw his girls in. That's good. I'll show you some of his work. There's him. So Joshua Milliton I follow. Francesco Francesco Mantina, which I've heard a lot of people don't follow him. But just maybe it's half and half because he kind of copies work a little bit. Mm -hmm. he, he looks like he kind of, like, copies and pastes, and then he just goes over. I mean, he's a good artist. You can tell, like, there's some things. This is his work. Right. But there's other like you can there's some artists that I've called them out like hey that's that's my shit right there I can tell from the exact pose the exact like everything I mean I can see that but that there's so many art pictures out there I guarantee you any artist like they say that I'll oh go find and somebody well else. one guy goes he even like he went like rendered it down like we're look at the gun no right. I'm sure it's the same but like I said oh. even if they can talk that shit I guarantee you as original as they think their poses i'll find you a picture where someone well, wasn't the that pose exact it was pose. more of like that he literally just copied literally copied their art and then and put, put it, it on this and then just went over it with the, like you know some of adding some extra layers right. of his work over it which that's what was pissing people off so they were like he's a good artist so like there are some things you look at you're like wow that's wow he he did that like and... i could definitely see that i just find it so funny where people are like that's mine i'm oh made yeah, that yeah originally no. and i'm no, like I know you you're not that. even near the first yeah. person to make something like that or near that if it's that copy is different it's page. more yeah it's more of like, like the whole page of, yeah <laughs> but it's like oh my you know i've seen that they copied that one character it's like Dude, your character position and style is yeah. not that original. So, Get over yourself. There's that. There's him. I like him, though. There's still some things. Are, he's been doing a lot of Spawn stuff. I like, really like all the main covers he's been doing there also. Cool. Um, Derek Chu is a new up-and-coming guy I've been following now. Um, he did some cool Harley Quinn stuff, some cool Flash stuff. Actually, a new Flash comic coming out that I really like. I think I'm going to pick up. Nice. Um, there's him, Gabriel Del Otto, which I think has actually kind of been around for a while um so i've been following those guys there is some other ones but i, I can't think of the those ones on the top of the head but art germ joshua Milton are for sure my favorites right now um gotta follow those guys those are the ones and anything they they do i'm like I'm picking up your shit because <laughs> it's just my so... problem is so rough for those though because then i'll have a good artist right that i've been following for a while and i'll get to a shitty writer yeah it, i you see the thing is 
I just pick it up because I like the cover. Yeah, I know. You just don't do the cover. <laughs> I'm just, I look at it. You don't even give a shit about uh, the Yeah, I, I don't art. even care what's inside <laughs> it. I'm like, mm, this is shit story, but oh my gosh, look this, this cover. cover. <laughs> look at this cover. Goddamn you. cover whores. <laughs> Yeah, that I just uh, there's just some things of just like oh my gosh I can't I can't like pass don't up get me wrong that. when the when the oh, human Adam Hughes is another one I love too oh, nice. but he's new though he's or but, not new but he's been around for but a while when they did the uh, custom covers for IVX I picked up one of those for that exact reason but that's probably the only time I've ever done that saw cover and I was just like I must have it it shall be mine <laughs> yeah, so here's some here's some art germ stuff well that's not bad I like his style it's got that semi realism to it. Nice soft tones. No, oh, that's Gary Beard all day all though. That's when he did the Grim Knight. Oh, nice. That I was like an that interesting one. run. <laughs> Jim Lee doing Jim Lee on cover six. <laughs> I thought that was funny. He says Lee James at the top. <laughs> so he illustrated himself, but that's funny. Th those are yeah, those are pretty cool covers. I those are our germ. Um, who else have I been following? Uh, oh, have you been? I told you to follow that book. Die, huh? Yeah, I'm still on. I still have a check down the second chapter. Adam Hughes. I like that. I never did like that depiction of Sabrina, though. No, I I don't. I just like that that cover too. When but it's uh, a good picture. I meant the character. Oh, that, you know what I mean. The, the story's actually pretty good. I actually enjoyed that book. It kind of had you a know, mix the of show like, was pretty good. I've oh, heard. I like the show. The show it was, was pretty crazy. dark. I heard. Too, I did. Which yeah, is good. Because they went more of the with the comic book. Uh, yeah, the that, have you read that one too? Yeah, the original run. No, no. The, the there's a new one. That oh, there's came a out. new one. Yeah, check that one out. That oh, one's really. Because I read good. the original. Run, this one's dark, like yeah, dark. They, they, that's what they were trying to do, but they, it didn't go as dark as the comic book. That's why okay. I got to read the comic book. I think it's oh, a little yeah. bit darker. You read this, you're like, this is a Sabrina book. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, always fun. Yeah, it's this, good. I love when they do the characters you wouldn't expect to do some of the dark, dark, like when they have Archie Cross with like Werewolf. Or... Yeah, I picked up like Archie versus Predator one. That yeah, one's that funny. Yeah, that was funny. They're going to do a second one, I guess, now. Oh, wow. I've just seen in the previews. They, like, have oh, Archer, cool. they have Archie versus Punisher, I know, is a good one. Uh... What one is that one? Is Jughead's Revenge? Zombie Jughead? Oh, yeah, I've seen those ones. Yeah, they, they, they're, uh, it's called the uh, Afterlife, the, their line. They call it Afterlife Archie. It's kind of like their darker line of uh, comics. That's where the Sabrina came from, was Afterlife. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, so they have that one. They had like the Jughead Werewolf one. Yeah, that one's um, interesting. Then they did a. Uh, like there was another one. Though. But yeah, they. I guess they've been doing pretty well with those books. They sell a lot with uh, they do those pretty ones. Good. Honestly, the crossovers never do bad. You know what I mean. And the Elseworld stories, even on regular comic books, usually take a good run. Scotty Young is another one I love too. He yeah, does, he does all one. those cartoon kind of characters. That's funny. I like those. But oh yeah, that Alex Ross man. Oh yeah, that one. I see. We saw that one the other week. I love that one. This one sold out everywhere, and I, I just had to pick that. I actually picked up two because I love that cover. It's like. Yeah, that's a badass Alex Rod. Like, just this Hulk, you know, coming down from the sky. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, ooh, pretty good cover. That's my favorite one, too. Let's see. What else is going on this week? Um, just have Avengers, really. Oh, well, they have Avengers. We have Shazam, Shazam this week. And then I feel like we have, we know we have something else, too. I'm re I was really excited for as well. Oh, Pet Cemetery. There I am really so excited for the Ghost of Yes, it's and so Stephen good. King himself already said he yeah, liked he it, even good. though it's not the same. The same a book. little bit. He likes the way they yeah, went. He though. says they changed it, but that they changed it in a good way. So, and anytime Stephen King and well, he did endorse one of his movie to books, but it wasn't a big screen; it was a small screen. Which one was that one? Oh God! Or, what I mean is, uh, I like all the ones that he endorses usually, and mm -hmm. this was the only one I didn't. There's Stephen King. Book adapted to movie, and then the bullet was the adaptation of works by Stephen King. It's gonna be in the two thousands. Yeah, that was another one, but they said that one was bad. Oh yeah, here's that uh, Detective Comics one I was telling you about for Art Germs. Oh, nice. But oh, see, but then there's, there's that one, and then he did the that's this the new the, the yeah. like his more modern take. Oh my gosh, that I want that one's so cool. Like yeah, he like I said, he's a he's a good artist, and my uh, and everyone's picking up his stuff now. Like everyone's falling on him now. Oh God, unless it was a Dean Koontz book, but I didn't think it was. 
He has, I didn't know he had this. Ah, there, I was on the wrong list. Yeah, one friend just uh, seen the the re uh, movie right now. I think it was Bag of Bones. That's probably the one. Ah, uh, sounds up. familiar. Bag of Bones. Bag of Bones. But uh, it's a bad adaptation. It's one of the only ones that he uh, endorsed that I did not like. Hmm. I forgot they did all the Dark Tower comic books. Yeah, I should check them all out. I read the the yeah no they the did the ta series, yeah Marvel but... I think did uh, Dark Tower. Well, I don't know if it yep Marvel. I don't know if they well, did them published. all. Uh, they did the Dark Tower, the Stand, and nope, that's it. They actually yeah. published all of his comic book work. He didn't. He didn't have comics with anybody else. Cool. They actually, uh, most of them do really interesting stuff. Dean Koontz had one too. Oh, yeah, but comics. one of my, one of my uh, comic Dark friends just came out of the Shazam movie now, and he says uh, it was freaking amazing, and never thought I'd love DC movie that much. <laughs> uh, they need it. How about that? Oh, they published with Bantam. Okay. Uh, not not the other, but uh, Dean Koontz. Stephen King publishes it. Yeah, like there's this, uh, yeah, this, uh, they just released. Uh, are you, you going to pick up some of these dis deceased books? Probably. It depends. I, it depends on the They're, series. Uh, I'm it's kind of like a, like a, I'll have, to, I'll have to read you the story, but it, it's like a, an apocalypse kind of a little bit with some, I think zombies are involved in a little bit mm. in this one. But yeah, they're doing like these cool homages to the like um, horror movie posters. Oh, like okay. that's yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. Down, then, yeah. the, the first one's uh, the It poster. So it's like uh, Robin with the red, or no, Robin and then it's Joker uh -oh. with the balloon. And you're like, oh, with him smiling. Right. I was like, that's cool. Got that one. That's going to be interesting. So, yeah, that one's uh, pretty cool. I don't really pick up DC stuff, but like, I only pick up some of the stuff that I can just read and then that's it. I don't have to like read, <laughs> right, keep continuing it. reading and like, oh crap. I just, <laughs> I just pick up this little series. That's it. And that will be done. That's fine. Like I was going to do um, Heroes in Crisis, but then... I didn't get into it because it's I was like, there, there's so much that I don't know what's going on. Well, it's also a really big event, too. It's it, That one's a universe that, banner. I mean, but a lot it, of people are liking it now towards the end. It's right. getting a little bit better. It's getting better, but that's not how it should event you, bro. <laughs> I should like the whole event. That's why people don't just buy them the way they just buy the trades. They're like, you know what, I'm going to just wait till it's all done, then read it as a whole instead of just buying a you know, reading it. Because a... we've had that problem with ivx secret wars 2 yeah i wasn't a fan of uh secret wars uh 2 2 yeah wasn't a fan either just wasn't that good it was all did right did you read uh, major x no i still have a guy rob character no i still have a guy there's this it. big old thing he's pissed about he goes let me tell you about spider-man and deadpool number 47 it is no way the first appearance of major x because supposedly there is a cameo of this oh. character in that book and it is because I ha I looked in it because I, I I was reading I still right. read Spider Man verse so I was like oh shit I have a book that's worth something yeah, yeah, yeah. so I looked and he's real he's like in there but he's like maybe that big that like literally that small in the page and it's like a bunch of other little characters and this one uh, spread and yeah he's in there that's so I think he's just mad because now he goes it came out a week after Deadpool ten. And supposedly, I guess, this one, he did a variant cover. And this is only you can buy on his store. Oh. Uh, and it was like 100 bucks I even heard for some people. Anyways, I'm giving a notice by mentioning it here, but I will never, ever sign a single copy. So he's saying he'll never sign your 47, your Spider-Man versus oh, wow. Deadpool. Because he, he's pissed. And Deadpool number 10 came out a week before, as I anticipated a clown move like this. That's funny. So he... he so he knew Marvel was going to do something like this where they were just going to secretly plant, you know, because I like to do that. I've noticed oh, that they'll they do, do little things like that. Stuff. And I like at first I thought it was kind of like not really meant. It was just kind of like, oops, accident. Didn't mean to do it. Yeah, that's now that now, it's, now it's like, mm, now I think you guys are, you guys do do these things on purpose. No, they do. They do fuck with their artists a lot. So both companies. So yeah, he, I guess he was just mad. That's why he did that variant covers that because he knew this is going to happen. So he's like, well, you know what? I'm going to do this first. So that this does happen. I can say that I did the I did my character first, and this yep, is my first. <laughs> then they don't get to take control. Of that so, 
Yeah, I, I just thought it was very funny. I picked up another Spider-Man 47 and a Major X2 because I was like, well, why not? Maybe it'll be another Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't popular when he first came out until somebody else picked him up and wrote for him. Yeah, Rob Liefeld just couldn't write the character he built, which was funny. Yeah, I'm not a fan of him, that's for sure. I Like I said, I read a little bit of Major X yeah, and right. it, was, uh, it was really he's just... He's a good a, concept guy. He yeah. really does have good concepts. Yeah. Like when he comes up with ideas. But I good. feel like he doesn't give credit where it's due no, sometimes never. either. Like uh, Niza. Yep, he doesn't give any credit to anybody or who, himself. who helped him create Deadpool. I, he, I feel like sometimes he like always says like he's the main guy that created Deadpool. He never gives like, oh, me and him both. Like, you know, right. they, it's he, more of like, this is my character. Deadpool is my character. He's my... too focused on himself. And I think it's because of his position in the community. You know what I mean? He's... I think he's a shit drawler. <laughs> Especially we can't draw feet. <laughs> I mean, feet aren't. And then that he easy. can't draw le- lips either. Like lips. I, I've been looking yeah. at his some of his more because yeah, he came back. Bad. He came back to Marvel now. Yeah. Since he's doing this major X, he did uh, X Force now. Yeah. Um, he really and can't. Yeah, he he's can't not do a lips. good artist. His lip. I'm like, I always make fun. Like, and all the other guys make fun. Like, where's where's Wolverine's lips? He yep. ain't got no lips. He's got a line. He's got a line, but no lips. You look like this. So there's that, and then I don't know. So oh, and then sometimes one guys will make fun of him because he Can't he like hands. drew an extra knuckle or something, <laughs> and they're like, "Why does he have an extra five knuckles?" <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. It's like so, all right, calm I mean, down. I guess he was cool at his prime. Everyone loved him at that time because yeah. it was it was the style back then. I feel like it was like one that. more. I think it's more of that thing of we hadn't gotten our standards yet. <laughs> Like they changed I mean, there was something new for them for a lot of comic people because, like, in the, till the eighties to eighty nines, everything was just very simple. Simple, and then here comes the nineties with all these fresh new guys from right. Todd McFarlane. But I will and, say, like, there are people in the eighties who were drawing hands and feet correctly. So, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, that's not necessarily his best excuse. J- uh, well, no, I was gonna say Jim Starlin. No, he didn't draw. He he wrote. <laughs> yep. I was yeah. no, he well, did. Uh, he did that. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe he did uh, do drawing and writing. I'm not too so. sure. I don't know. Let's check. He's another guy I've always wanted to go meet. He would be a fun one. Uh, Eric Powell. Are you a fan of him? Have you ever read The Goon? Yeah. He's coming to Mile High Comics if you want to go next month. What day? I have to look at it again. But yeah, he's coming uh, to do some signings and stuff. I think it's even no. It's on free comic book day? Yeah, it's on free comic book day. Nice. So May 4th, I believe. Oh, he does draw. Yeah, I thought he did. I thought he did. Where is his credits? No, I don't want to work. There we go. Big Fi. Writer, 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 writer and artist on Gildamesh. Writer, writer, writer. Writer and artist on Mysteries in Space. Hmm. Writer, 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 artist on Superman, the computers that save Metropolis one shot. <laughs> uh, looks like he's just been done a few little hits and misses there. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he's a fine artist. It looks uh, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, artist and writer, Doctor Strange, number 23 through 26, r- artist and writer. He's got some pretty big stuff on here. Incredible Hulk, volume 2, number 222, artist. Um... The thing being, they say artist, but that means you could be a penciler. Yeah. Or an inker. Or a, which, no offense to pencilers or inkers, they are very necessary, but that does not make you an artist, sir. I mean, someone else drew it and you traced it, or you sketched some lines. You gotta go all mm-hmm. the way, buddy. Color, too. Otherwise, you're a drawer, not an artist. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we're almost at about the end of yeah. our time. We've actually made a pretty good time this one. We didn't have to discuss, or I didn't lose out of things to discuss. There's no. a lot going on today, and this week, and this month. So hopefully it'll be just like that the next time. And uh, we'll get a good standard time. I think 7, 7.30 is pretty nice on these Thursday nights to get this rolling. We didn't have too many uh, people this time, but we didn't have as much prep time to yeah. share stuff either because I was setting stuff up at the last minute. But yeah, that's good. I think we'll have a interesting couple months coming with some movies and mm-hmm. stuff. This has really been a good year for movies, I'd say. Yeah, I think this will be Did real fun. Did we hear anything about Dumbo? Didn't Dumbo, I seen. I, I liked it. Was it good? 
I think it was good for what it was for kids. You know, but though I never really liked the the, the movie, like the original movie. Oh, really? I love the original. Movie. I you know used to I used to always get scared of watching that movie because it the, does have scary parts the, with the crows and the well uh, not even the, but the, the fire scene. No, the uh, well that one actually is kind of creepy. Yeah, right, isn't it? But no, the, the one that really creeped room? me out more is where he gets drunk and then it's the the. The pink balloon. Uh, oh yeah, elephants. the pink balloon. Oh god, it's like a psych psychoactive <laughs> trip. That one, and then the one that always reminded me of that one. The same scene is the Winnie the Pooh, when he does the same exact thing. When it's those weird like. Oh, I know which one. Elephants. Boom, boom, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah. And he's dreaming, and he just sees Actually, these weird like elephants, and like dancing, yeah, yeah, and yeah. That, mm, I don't know about this for being a kids' creepy. movie. It's so, a little creepy. There. But That's they, good to hear, though. It's good to hear that there's at least some good who come in. I was very kind of worried because of the. It was, the only thing that did suck, I guess, is that it really wasn't about Dumbo too much because. You know, I, I kind of was sad that, you know, because in the... Actually, in the original one, they don't really talk either, right? It's more of just the, the they narrate the whole scene for them, right? I feel like he might talk a little bit, but he mostly nods. He mostly yeah, just nods. Just now I think about it, never mind it. Because I was like, I was mad that he wasn't really talking in the film. It was more of just like, you know, he would just do things. And then there was the actors that were, you know, telling the story more. Um, but yeah, the, yeah they I, didn't have like a narrator... Did... Like, like they did because uh, i was pretty sure the crows were narrating most of the story for them um i think they did and then the one that it. talked the most for them was the mouse was his little mouse yeah his mouse did a lot of talking see so i guess that's what kind of was like bummed me out was it more about the that's too early he wouldn't be talking here yeah, I'll have to watch. See this one. Dumbo meets Timothy Mouse. Yeah, like they had a, a homage to him in the movie, but I, I that was movie. it. They, he didn't do anything. They, <laughs> he didn't talk. He had nothing to do with the movie. He just had the, the outfit on and that was it. Yeah, now, now that you mention it, he does not talk now that I remember. He mostly nods his head and toots his nose. So Now that, now that you mention it, so, I didn't think about that, but yeah. Yeah, so I, you know, I thought it was good. I just, you know, I was d bummed out, I guess, more because it was. But I guess, how else are you gonna go about it? Right. I and I kind of felt that when we were going into it, like when you make it that real, right? When you make it that semi-realism digital production, you take the fantasy away. And then they did kind of go off into a whole kind of another direction. Did they do the whole animal mistreatment tangent? No. Mm actually kind of a little, little bit. bit yeah because at least they cover it i just didn't want it to be a whole thing no it? i don't think it was about the whole yeah because in this one they make him a bigger guy comes out of nowhere and he buys the circus oh. and then he he makes like this big amusement park kind of circus oh yeah i don't remember that which it does sound like some timber would come up with because yeah, even like when you when you look at all the rides and everything you're like mm, these are really wacky kind of like yeah like you, yeah like Willy Wonka which, it, it took me back to Willy Wonka which I was like not happy about because I was like I did not like Willy Wonka I, but his take it on wasn't it. necessarily like I actually enjoyed it I liked that it was different because I've read the books and and you'd be surprised I, to hear this but Tim Burton has a closer representation than the original i think just because maybe he well maybe because he could be able to do that now with the technology no no the, no? the tone and everything oh, okay the tone. it's a tim burton's is a little darker but when don't... you read the original stories and if you ever really think this is johnny depp right who played the part? yeah yeah i just Which, didn't like yeah he wasn't a like... great wonka yeah. no the problem is that while the story on depp's side was more accurate even the story about like the glass elevator and some other shit was it was more accurate with uh tim burton's run but you gotta remember who the original Willy Wonka was. Yeah, it was a uh, what's his name? Sarsa Sarsa G. G. Uh, Gene Pryor. Yeah. Uh, no, no. No, it starts with a G though. I know it's with a G. Uh, Gene. No, I thought it was Gene something, right? Gene. No, it's like all right. Fuck it. I'm just typing Willy Wonka. There he is right there at the bottom. Yep. Gene Wilder. There we go. Gene Wilder. There we go. He was the original Willy Wonka. And I like his, And I like he's him. an amazing he's actor. He, like yeah, he's movie. perfect for the movie. role and the way they displayed that role. And Do you like when he does the scenes where um, 
Yeah, where he's like, where he's in the, where they're in the tunnel. And yeah, he's the just tunnels, singing. The, the crazy and scene. And just like all happy. And then suddenly he's screaming. <laughs> and he's all saying, yeah, and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, he's he did good. I like he did it really. And to be fair, he's an amazing actor. I mean, he, oh yeah, he, he always was. I, I he, always uh, loved him. I just think that's why I call him. I loved like him. He in, act um, along the uh, Richard Pryor in many, many movies. Yeah, I many, loved many. him in. Um, the Son of Frankenstein. Yeah, Son of Frankenstein is one of his and, best ones. Uh, the the the, how, the Haunted Hill or something. Yeah, the House on Haunted Hill. Something like that. Or the Haunted House. Haunted House. Or I was think it was called something like that. Hill House. Hill. No, was it Hill? I don't know. One of those ones. But yeah, that was my other favorite ones of those ones too as well. I want to remember because I do remember the one you're talking about. But um, Haunted Honeymoon. Yep. There we go. Haunted yeah. Honeymoon. Yep. That's it. I do remember, yeah. I like that one, too. But yeah, I think... Yeah, we should probably end it, though. <laughs> yeah, we ran it into 10 minutes ago, but we were like, nah, we gotta talk about that. Dumbo. But yeah, thank everybody who turned in and who didn't. We appreciate your patronage, and we'll see you either next week or two. Good one.